Hey everybody, what's up? Hope you guys are doing good today. Just uh, got done dropping off Elijah at daycare. Heading back over to the house and gonna start on our uh, the continuation of our Fish the Moment lake map breakdowns. Which, hey, if you, this, these things are really cool. If, if you guys, you know, uh, have a lake that you fish a lot, maybe, you know, wanna learn more about it, or if you got a body of water that you haven't fished much, and would like to learn more about it, um, check out these lake map breakdowns that we're doing. Just go to fishthemoment.com, the website, check them out there. We got a bunch of them around the country. I'm working on spring maps right now, and they're, it's really helpful uh, for a lot of different situations. Um, plus, you can check out all the other cool stuff we got on the website. It's getting more and more neat stuff all the time on fishthemoment.com. Check that out. But hey, today's uh, a little topic, YouTube topic. I was gonna uh, start continuation of lure categories but i take a little break away from that today i think it maybe everybody gets burned out just talking about baits every day and i got thinking about something because i saw i saw an article yesterday on crawdads and it got me thinking about how people um they're they're always you know thinking in terms of matching the hatch and that type of stuff and you know i got thinking about it and you know, and I, I thought about it like all evening long, and it's like, you know, I said, it, in my opinion, from what I found out in bass fishing, I think this whole thing about match the hatch in bass fishing is basically a myth. And I know it has a lot, you know, maybe a lot bigger aspect to do, like in trout fishing, you know, when they're trying to match the, the nymphs and the flies and that type of stuff. But as far as bass fishing lures, matching the you know crawdads or whatever bait fish the fish are on i got thinking about it and i don't think that it's true i really don't i think now i think there's times yeah i mean because i'm sure i'm gonna ruffle from feathers on this video some people are gonna say well i found a you know a crawdad that had some blue pinchers and i put a you know a blue tailed trailer on my jig and i caught them yeah that's not that's not what i'm talking about though i am the the reason and how i've came up to this conclusion that this whole match in the hatch deal is a myth is that I have been a fanatic over my uh, fishing career <coughs> and um <coughs> and um you know trying to have pay attention to details specifically on color I mean I've got every dye color that you can imagine in the boat I carry you know a dozen different bottles of fingernail polish I've got I tie my own skirt so I can match you know colors perfectly I've spent a tremendous amount of time trying to mimic certain colors and after I got thinking about it when I say for example if I went down to the lake and you know I turned over some rocks and I found the crawdads that were there you know I don't care if they are brown or green or if they had a little bit of blue or orange or if they were more black or red pinchers that type of stuff I tried to match them I tried to match my jigs to the crawdads that I found in the lake and it simply didn't work. I remember I was fishing a tournament out at Lake Mead. It's been about six or seven years ago. And every single one of the bass I had, that I caught in practice down there, and, and in, some in the tournament too, you'd look down in their throat and there'd be big, bright red pinchers on the crawdad sticking out of their throat. And I was catching them like on a drop shot and a jerk bait. So it's obviously they weren't even feeding, or I mean, they were opportunistic, but I wasn't even catching them on a, any type of jig resembling bait. So I spent a bunch of time tying up, you know, jigs that were basically the same size. And I put these bright red claws on them, just like I saw in the crawfishes in the fish's mouth. <clears throat> I couldn't get a bite on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I couldn't get a bite on the crawdads at all. I mean, it's like so that that's one thing that really got me realizing that that just doesn't make any difference. And it's been the same with jerk baits and with crank baits. I mean, I tried to resemble some of the colorations, whether it be in the gizzard or the threadfin shad. If I was catching them on bluegills, you know, I might try a bluegill pattern and or crappie or whatever. And I just never saw the correlation, never. But do I think color is important? Absolutely, it's important. And here's my theory on the thing. I don't think that matching the hatch in bass fishing is critical at all. What is important, and this is one of my 
secrets, if there's any secrets left in fishing or tips, but it's one of the things that I really try to teach people about, and it's hard to teach people about unless I can have them in the boat and show it. It's more important when you're determining color <coughs> on a spinnerbait, <coughs> a spinnerbait or a worm, or a, you know any type of bait like that, instead of matching the hatch, it's more important to match the water clarity that you have because what I'm looking at is every single type of water clarity that we have, there's there's like, there's a tint to it. Some of the lakes like in Florida, they're, it's clear water, but it's tannic and it's black. Some of the lakes you go to, like if you go to St. Clair up in Michigan, the water's really clear, but it's like, it's got this like this aqua blue milky look into it. And then, you know, there's different variations all across the country based upon the particulate in the water, the amount of, you know, the algae, the nutrients. There's a lot of different variations that determine a specific color to the water, even though it can be considered clear. In my opinion, when it comes to color, it's not matching the bait fish or matching the hatch is the key, but it's matching that water clarity where your bait it does a combination between it stands out subtly and it also blends in. And what I'm talking about that is when you put your bait in the water, what you want it to be is you want, you don't want the bait to stand out very much, but you want it to stand out a little bit. And that changes constantly. That, that changes with time of day. That changes with the sun angle. That, that changes with the light penetration based upon different type of clouds, uh, sun rain whatever like that the same water clarity the way that a certain color will look in the water changes all the time based upon the light intensity that's entering that water so i'm constantly striving to find a color that what i call it just looks good in the water and you see, everybody says that it's like they'll pull a bait alongside the boat and say man that looks really good and what they do is when 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 they when you see that and when you're not talking about the action of a bait but you're talking about you know the color of it it's that bait that stands out just a little bit but at the same time it also blends in it's natural and that's what i'm looking for in fishing sorry about the jiggly camera here it's a road's really rough here in springfield but that's the thing that I'm really looking for is that combination of, of a slight standout and subtly at the same time. And if you've seen some of my videos in the past, I talk about that quite a bit. And especially with jerkbait fishing. And it's really hard to explain to somebody unless I can just show them in the boat. It's one of the first things I do in my trips that I take out on these fish the moment lessons we do is I try to teach people you know color when it comes to water clarity as far as the best colors i think and personally the bass will re will bite and they react to a bait much better if you focus on your color patterns and your color subtleties on the water clarity rather than paying attention to the bait fish or the crawdads and it get you know and but basically you know it gives you a foundation to start out with i'm a big believer even though I don't feel that matching the hatch is very critical in bass fishing. I'm still a big believer in modifying color. And that's why I use a lot of dyes. I use a lot of fingernail polish. You know, I, like I said, I tie my own skirts to match up different water clarity situations. But I'm not tying those things. I'm, I'm not putting chartreuse or orange or blue or red on my jig trailers to match the hatch. I'm, I'm putting it on there to match the water clarity that I want to do. Or I want, the, I want the bait to do something in that water clarity. So anyway, guys, that's just a thought. Um, that's been my experience. I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with that. I'm sure that I'm going to get a bunch of comments about people giving me specific examples of matching the hatch and why that may work from time to time. I can tell you from my own personal experience, from fishing thousands and thousands of days all across the country, all across the world, actually, that I do not believe that matching the hatch is a big deal in bass fishing. Pay attention to your water clarity, make those color adjustments based upon that water clarity, the sunlight intensity, the light penetration, the clouds, wind, all that stuff. That's gonna be the big thing. So anyway, just a thought for today. Hope you guys are having a good day. And um, like I said, if you like the video, please hit that like button, man. It really helps out. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. I think what I'm going to do tomorrow, I've got, I've been thinking about it also. I'm going to give, um, I'm going to give you a list of the five most influential professional fishermen in the history of our sport. I've been thinking about that. 
um, the people that have made basically the biggest contributions to elevating the sport. So I think we'll do that tomorrow. So anyway, hope you guys have a good day. See you later.